What's happening YouTube? Thanks for tuning back into the channel. Today we've got some great Duramax content continuing for you guys. Got some really exciting stuff in the mail today. We'll have a look here. We got packaging. Guess what those are? Those are injectors peeps. Definitely. Injectors from back from Bitterroot Diesel out in Montana. We're going to get those things open. We're going to talk to you about these injectors, what we did and why we did it. Make sure you guys stay tuned. So when I sent these injectors off guys, it was legit like two, two and a half weeks ago at most. I live in Ohio, they are out in uh, Montana. So it takes a couple of days of shipping, going there, coming back. So if it is getting done in that amount of time, priority one, that is freaking awesome. Having a full set of injectors cleaned up, gone through, tested, charted, sent back in that amount of time, it's absolutely fantastic. So I'll give them an A plus on that one. Also gonna give them an A plus on customer service. So when I talked to these guys, originally I called them and I said, hey, this is my goal. I wanna get to 750 horse. I wanna be able to do this. I've got these add-ons additionally on with it. I've got the turbo. I've got, uh, you know, we're doing head studs. So we're, we're bringing that one in, plus we're doing a dual fueler setup. So we got that one all figured out with them and they ended up recommending going with a rebuild kind of thing and they ended up saying we're going to do new nozzles on them uh, we're going to bench flow these we're going to check them see how they end up coming out and we're going to get to that number for you so we ended up going with some bosch injector nozzles which are top of the game between bosch sns extra g those are like the good ones in the industry so make sure you keep an eye out for those if you guys end up wanting to get some rebuilds done so Let's get this box open and see what we ended up getting back. So, open it like Christmas time. Got everything back here, back to Rust Belt Mechanic, and all the papers, purchasing goodies. We got a card from them, Bitterroot Diesel. And there is their information. I will also have a link to their stuff down in the description below. So look out for that one. Bitterroot Diesel Performance. Boy, that's some that's a high quality sticker right there, guys. That one's definitely going up on the left. All right, so we got these back. Now when I sent these things off, I packaged them up pretty good, but nothing like these. Each of them come shipped in their own individual little packet, and then each one of them are in these nice little vacuum sealed bags right here. So getting into those, they look absolutely amazing. So we're gonna cut this one open right here. So you guys are the first ones having a look at it, just like me. Let's have a look, see at these things. Now I talked to the guys over there and the guys over there, Matt and Ben. Ben is their like CNC machinist, been doing it freaking forever. And he is just a book of knowledge. So when he starts talking about these injectors, it's just information piled on information. He's just, he's absolutely amazing. So looking at these, he said they clean them up fantastically. And as he said, they absolutely are. Solenoids are even cleaned in there. There for your overflows, cleaned out and all. Let's look here in the end where our lines go in. Also looks absolutely fantastic. Our nozzle ends, which are brand new, like I said. Those look awesome. Brand new brass crush washer on here. New nozzle retainer on there as well. New O-rings. All in all, it looks like a freaking brand new injector, guys. I'm, I'm blown away. I'm speechless. These things are absolutely amazing looking. So we're going to get through looking over the rest of them just in case. And let's see. I 
one of the cool things, as you guys can see, is that these were all packaged up nice and neat and they've got the numbers all put on here. When you send these in, I made sure I put also the cylinder number that those things came out of specifically so I know if I had any issues when I corresponded it to the head work and stuff that I was doing, I would know where the issues were coming from. So they corresponded and they obviously they said, you know what, we do that anyways. We send, we tell the customers that it's a good thing to do and they send these things back vacuum sealed and all sealed up. Now what they're able to do for you guys, and they emailed this right over as soon as I got the injectors, is they give us the actual test results. These are the flow bench test results on this one, and they do a full panel test on these, um, on these injectors. So as you guys can see, well, this is our milliliters per minute, and we've got the different flow rates at the different kind of RPMs or power ranges that they do the testing on. This first one here is gonna be at full power, wide open throttle. This is gonna be maxing out your injectors. We're at 112 milliliters all the way across the board. Then we go down here and these are our return numbers. So anywhere from 19 through 22, 24, right around there. So all pretty good right in that one. The deceleration, we got four right across the board. The moderate throttle, we've got 23 and 24 milliliters. Looks pretty good there. And at idle, we're at eights all the way across the board as well. Now here, this last one is one of the biggest ones that I was just questioning on exactly what it was. That one is going to be your start of injection. So what that means is that is the pressure which it takes to open that spring right in the end of the nozzle. So we've got even amounts all the way across on this one. Now I did have an issue and they notified me as soon as they found out when they were doing their final bench testing. They said, hey man, your number seven injector is messed up. It had a flow rate that was off from the other ones. I mean, it, it ran okay and I did notice some kind of smoking there uh, at idle, but you know, we still ran all right. But then I was going into detail with Ben and he was saying how much of an adjustment there are with these. They cannot guarantee them and cannot get that into adjustment absolutely correctly. The return rate was twice as much as all the other injectors. So we ended up ha either having to do a full rebuild on that one and actually we opted to just go ahead and get one of their uh, remand injectors because that just ends up uh, saving us some time and without having to wait and get a bunch of other parts. So our number seven is pretty much a brand new remand one, all remand for that one. They did change out the injector nozzles, like I said, the, with the flow bench rates, it was absolutely amazing. Uh, the cost on these are really not that bad. If you end up getting the injector uh, nozzles through them, they ended up costing, I wanna say right around 700-ish. You know, don't 100% quote me, I haven't gotten the, you know, the bill on that one yet, but they're like 700-ish bucks. And then for the full flow bench, uh, the testing, the tuning, which is another huge thing that they actually do compared to everything else. Uh, that's an additional 400, I believe, or 450 bucks, and then shipped back to you guys. Now again, when we're talking injectors, all injectors are not created equally. Even if you were to take a brand new set of injectors that say you just get from Bosch, if you were to flow bench them just like this, and the guys over at Bitterroot Diesel were able to show me some of those flow bench numbers on a brand new set, they have about a four and a half ish percent variance in their flow rates, in their return rates, uh, all the way across the board. Now, with Bitterroot Diesel, they do have the ability to do fine tuning. He's able to go in there, hone little areas here and there, mess with the actual injection points on it, make sure the springs are at the correct rates, either put new springs in or do different springs on the injection rates to be able to match them up to the correct percentage. They said that once everything goes through here and we do our flow bench test ratings, which you guys see on paper right there, we are gonna be within 1% across 
all eight of your injectors. Now I know when we're talking the difference between 1% and you know 5 to 8%, it may not be that big, but across eight injectors, that could be the difference in you know maybe 15 horsepower, which when you're actually trying to get to a certain number and push your limits, that may be the difference in actually getting you there. So one of the biggest differences in these guys is they're gonna take their time and they're gonna be able to give you guys the most quality product that you guys can actually get when it comes to diesel injection and diesel injector services. All right, now we're over to, to the head and we're actually gonna be installing them. We're gonna be removing our tips that were on there, the caps that we're, sh we're shipping. Now, the one thing you make sure you wanna do is this O-ring right here. You wanna make sure you give that one a nice little bit of lube. We, I like using the uh, Mopar Trans lubricant it's just a light coat of grease pretty much get it all around there make sure that that thing slides nicely into the opening when we get there now you also may want to make sure that your openings where they actually seat down in the end is nice and clean because the end of these injectors it's just a brass washer just kind of like you know your brake uh, banjo bolts and stuff it's going to crush this washer and it's going to seat flat down in there so you don't want any kind of debris or anything like that in there either so we've got that and we've got our injector holds hold downs all nice and cleaned up also and we're going to get these things put in there and then the hold down bolts which are the 12 millimeters there you want to make sure that those um, the hold downs are dipped up because the bolts have a nice little half moon shape on the bottom and these are going to be tightened to 22 foot pounds <laughs> There we go. Now we're gonna continue on to the other ones all the way around, get those all put into place. Now one other thing you guys do not want to neglect is gonna be your injector lines. Now I know you guys can get a set off of, you know, some other site or you can get it from GM. These injector line sets between all eight of these plus the feed line, it's gonna to come to like 700 bucks. Between five to $700, yes, there are cheaper ones, but Chinese made, pretty cheap on the end, and the reviews aren't so great. So, what you can do is take these, and you can turn them into these. We All we ended up doing was taking Scotch-Brite to them, taking off all the old code, you know, the old just grime and gunk off of there, and then we ended up using a couple of finer pieces of Scotch-Brite, and then we actually took it over to our buffing wheel, and buffed it, waxed it, put a nice little coat onto it so it's not gonna corrode over time. So we've got pretty much a brand new set of injectors lines. I know they say that, you know, you're supposed to replace them after each use, but you know, lots of people are reuse these and we're gonna send it, see what we can do. Save a little bit of money on the build and get these things cleaned up and installed. So now fast forwarding a couple of days and you can see what we got done. We shined up all of our fuel lines, the test port line, we see all our fuel injector lines and the fuel rails themselves all shined up, everything routed and we're starting to put all of our brackets and everything on. Uh, kind of made and set up a custom PCV system here. Uh, we're gonna be running a couple of different things. We've got an adapter with some AN lines coming from the PCV and we're gonna route them up around onto the inlets. We've got two inlets, an outlet. We don't need the outlet. Uh, there's gonna be a PCV uh, little filter breather up here. And then on the drain side down here, we're gonna run a line there back and eventually down to our transmission. Oh wait, there's not a transmission in there. That's because it's out right there waiting on our stage five one to be done and look through at the shop. Hopefully it'll be here soon as well. And we're gonna get that one put in. It's uh, yeah, I'd say it's pretty simple. You know, once we're at this point with a cab off, makes it pretty easy. So we got that done. And then of course over here to give it all the fuel we can get, PPE, 
dual fueler setup. Ended up picking this one up used, second hand. Uh, ended up getting a new wheel for it. Routed the lines over here. They end up routing into the back of this side fuel rail. You can see back in here. There's an adapter fitting for that. And then we just, here in this little adapter block, that's where our uh, race valve ends up going into there. So all in all, things are coming together quite nicely, just waiting on our last few pieces, which is gonna be what's missing right there, Y-Bridge. That should be here very soon, and we'll be getting this build back together on the very next video. So there you have it, the build continues on. We're gonna be getting all of our other parts hopefully installed here very soon, get them into place. The trans, the Y-Bridge that is coming from HSP should be here in the next couple of days and hoping to get this one together through this coming weekend. It's gonna be something amazing. Uh, we're gonna do some quick tunes on it. We're gonna drive it to make sure everything is just you know nice and reliable for us. We're not gonna do anything crazy, put some bigger tunes on it uh, for at least a little while. We're gonna eventually get it dyno tuned, get it all dialed in right. And since you guys know, here on the build, we haven't really done anything with the bottom end and these things, bottom end, it's pretty strong right up through about 700, 750-ish. I know there's guys who push it a little bit past that, but I really don't wanna have to deal with a broken crank and a messed up block and everything, so we're not gonna be tuning it that high quite yet, at least. Maybe here in the uh, near future or sometime in the future, we'll be doing a, a crank change and everything like that to be able to get it up to, you know, some really fun numbers. We'll see how that one goes. Well, hopefully you guys are enjoying this build and how it's coming. Make sure you guys stay tuned. More is definitely coming on it and lots more indeed. Uh, we're actually gonna get it together and get it over to Ryan's Diesel Service. They are the ones who sponsored the badass turbo that we're getting in this and we'll do another video showing the sounds and everything after this thing gets running. That one is gonna be June 22nd at Ryan's Diesel Service over in um, Wisconsin. Make sure you go over to their Facebook page. I'll make sure to leave a link down in the description for that one. There's like a couple hundred trucks already set up to come to that one. It's gonna be one badass show. Well, thank you guys. That's all I've got for you today. Thanks, and I appreciate it. As always, you guys stay awesome.